Welcome to my platform. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your location. And if you like what I do here, please, after watching, subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notifications so that you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. In this platform, we react to all forms of video, what we do before putting the video, analyze it, and we sit down there to watch it together with you. Then later, we'll come to the comment section to talk about it. Of course, everybody is entitled to his or her opinion, but let us always do it constructively in the comment section. But there is one thing I want all of us to understand this very evening. We are facing a very formidable array of enemies. Both external and within. And we are going to overcome each and every one of these obstacles. That I can assure you. That they may know that the God we worship is an invisible God, not a God that was robbed by the hands of men. For we do not worship idol, and we can never, ever worship idol is impossible. This very family, this IPOB, belongs to the Most High. Chikwiki Kabi Amapurumi Hirin, and that is how it's going to be until Biafra comes and beyond to eternity. This evening, I want to place it on record that our enemies are intensifying their attack against us from every corner. I am not saying this as lamentation or complaint. I am only trying to prepare our people for what is to come. You are being prepared for what is to come. The time has come to separate the chaff from the wheat itself. Our march is very, very near. The enemies are trembling, they are quaking, they are doing all they can to try to stop us. But they have failed very woefully. And they will continue to fail. But I want to tell you that we are getting attacks from everywhere. From everywhere all over the world. And very soon, they will buy over some of you. Some of you, they will buy some of you over. 
the spirit of Obabi Asika and the Fajuna are still in some of you. When the time comes, they will buy you over. I am not doing this program tonight to ask all of you to be strong. I am doing it to remind you. Not that if they succeed in buying you over, you're not going to stop what we're doing. You can't. Not in a three, you cannot. Not in a trillion years. But I need you to appreciate one very simple fact. That at the end of this very race, everybody will testify that indeed Chukwogi Kabiyama, the same God of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus, the same God of Ehiri in Aguleri, the same God of Umweri, the same God of Ora Eri, the same God of Owe Eri, the same God of Arochupu. Not if you know about the, the, the true God, one true God. You will know that indeed, not only is he omnipotent, that that same God is the owner of this very agitation. No human being can stop it. We have enemies. And we need to be very, very careful. Both within and without. Very, very careful. The next two weeks will be very pivotal. Next two weeks will be very, very important in the life, or should I say, in this very mission that we have embarked upon. The devil will do everything. And you are going to watch spectacularly how we are going to destroy and shame the enemy. That at the end, every glory and adoration will belong to God and not to man. Now let us go and tell you what is happening that some of you do not understand. I want those of you who are hardcore, those who we are chosen before you we are born. There were some people who we are chosen before they we are born to agitate for Biafra restoration. This is a message for you. Those who we, from their mother's womb they were born to do this very work. You must be very, very strong. Because Biafra will open the eyes of black people all over the world. Because Biafra will mean that blacks from America, blacks from the Caribbean, from, from Southern America, they will all flood into Africa. It will be like the time that Yeshua was born. Biafra is like a light to become. They will follow it. They will say, let us go and see what is happening there. That is what these no colonialists do not want. They don't want Biafra to come. I am telling our people so they understand the mountains. I didn't say one mountain. The mountains in front of us that we need to overcome. And for us to overcome it, we need to be very strong mentally. Mental strength. Just like when you're doing anything in life. And it appears as if you are being buffeted from everywhere. That is the time that you no longer rely on willpower or your muscles. You go to your brain to endure and to persevere and to keep going until you overcome. That is the stage we are in right now. To make sure that our brain is in gear. To confront everything the Janja Wood has to throw at us. We don't have money. Their budget is over $20 billion to fight us. They can bribe Facebook. They can buy them off. They can do anything they like. They can come to some of you and bribe you off. They can promise you what you've never had before. They can give you maybe a house in Dubai. They can promise you a vehicle. They can tell you, oh, we'll make you vice president. They can promise you anything to make sure that you're like them. But this very IPOB, this very hardcore is not going to move. And I will there are no governors who are working. If our governors were working, Nandikan will not see a vacuum to fill. That is the problem. We leave the, the, we leave the main problem and start talking about, uh, you know, declaring sit at home. Why shouldn't there be sit at home? If people don't want to sit at home, does anybody go to harass them? Even since they made the announcement people should be going to work, out of fear, people should sit at home. They have made it known that it's only the day they will take him to court that they will ask people to sit at home. And I tell you, people are gladly sitting at home. They are not anything. gladly sitting at home. I've sampled a uh, whole lot of opinion. People think that the economy of the Southeast is being battered. How do by we do that? that, we, that we, can, we can afford to lose that, to make a point. That's the only way we can make a point now. Because this country has not recognized the contributions of the Igbos in this country. They have not. If not, tell me how the government will be talking about, uh, there's a, a word they use, to dominate that he has issued instruction to the military to dominate Anambra State during the election. Do you know what dominate means? Overwhelm, intimidate. That is even more serious than what iPod is talking about.
Because now most people will not be prepared to come out seeing rows and armored tanks and everything moving around. Because that's the meaning of dominate. We know security is important, but to use the word dominate, please the National Security Advisor, re-emphasize. And to start with, we are talking about discrimination. Do you know? The National Security Council just met and took that decision. In that National Security Council, not one human being from the whole of former Eastern region. Not one human being. That is part of what Namdekan is talking about. Injustice, lack of inclusion, not one human being. Because we are not in the... But, but Chief Dan, just a second. We are not in the service, uh, any of the service distance. We are not security advisor. We are not chief of staff. We are nothing. They couldn't even invite... They have two lucky lackeys in the, in the service. They would have called the governor of Imo State to come and tell them, theoretically, what is it that is happening as a basis of their decision taken. So in the National Security Council, where the decision was taken to dominate Anambra election, there was no Igbo man there. Not one. You knew I was... Con uh, uh, what do you call it? I was kidnapped on the 26th of yes. last month. Yes. And held for about three, four hours before they released me and took my vehicle and every other thing. And I had courage to ask. I was saying the blood of Jesus. I saw young men carrying brand new AK-47 rifles, intimidating myself and my driver. And I got annoyed. I said, God, I've, I'm above 70. I've lived the better part of my life. And I promise you I'll continue saying the truth until I die. And I asked them, what the hell do you think you're doing? He said, if I talk again, you will kill me. I said, you can't kill me. And the young man stopped his vehicle. I said, I said, you can't kill me because I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. You can't kill me. I said, 50 years ago, I was almost a major in Biafran Army. And he, he almost wept. Oh, God, did you serve in Biafran Army? I said, yes. If we need this, we wouldn't have taken off this job. The problem is coming for your own environment. If we knew that you helped to save our people, and I almost wept. And they said, nothing will happen to you and your driver. And they dropped us off about 30 minutes after that. They told us that most of the violence were imported, that they are being paid to go and destroy their own properties from outside, so that they create a problem as Igbos are doing something wrong. Our people have value for life. Igbos have value for life, more than any other tribe in this country. And I make, I, 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 I make good to say it anywhere. Because anybody who goes around this country investing does not hate this country. There was a time I was in one of your programs during the round from 9 to 10 o'clock. Then, then my friend uh, Ibrahim Dankwambo was governor of uh, Gombe State. I had a one-hour program. And I said, can any other tribe tell me who, which tribe has made any contribution to the development of this country, to the patriotism of this country more than Igbos have done? There's no part of this country you go and you don't see any Igbo man making an investment. Come to the whole of Eastern region. You don't see an Alpha man with one property. I said it on TV. And not, not one person. The governor called me. The not an governor, someone that an emergency meeting in Kano and discussed my, my, my program. I said, you see an Alpha man, he's selling currency in, at the road. You don't know where he comes in and when he goes. If you see a Yoruba man, he's a uh, labor, the tailoring service. They won't even buy an empty land. But an Igbo man comes to your place, buys land, develops it, makes sure they build a school. Igbo State Union build a college in Kano in the 50s that everybody was going to school. Is that hatred? Do we hate this country? Why do they hate us so oh, much? Thank you so much for watching this video together with me. Like I said before, if it is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel and you like what I do, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video, leave your comment in the comment section. You are free to criticize, but let us do it always constructively. Remain blessed. I appreciate your massive support and I love and cherish each and every one of you. Until I meet you again in my next video, for now I will say bye-bye.